I switched off the speaker, then went around through the house, turning off all the lights. My head ached, my stomach felt like it had been cast in lead, and yet my entire body felt eerily weightless. Upstairs, all the lights were on. I shut them off, too, then climbed beneath a scorching stream of water in the master bathroom. When I closed my eyes under the spray, an image of you popped up in my head, Allison. I chased it away. I couldn't keep doing this. I would drive myself crazy doing this. After the shower, I climbed into bed and just lay there in the dark, staring at the panels of moonlight that cut in through the bedroom windows. When I shut my eyes this time, it was the neon pink of the motel's marquee that projected against the screens of my eyelids. So I opened them again. The closet light was on. I didn't move for a while. I just kept still, the blankets pulled up to my chin, my heart strumming against my ribcage. A part of me thought that if I looked at that lighted doorway long enough, the light might go out. This insanity might stop. The light did not go out. I got out of bed and moved toward the closet door. Everything was silent except for the sound of blood funneling through my ears and a faintly flute-like whistle coming from my left nostril. I eased open the closet door a bit more and peered inside, startled by a figure standing against the far wall and bracketed by our clothes. The figure was me, my reflection in the beveled mirror. In the ceiling, the light fixture fizzed, blinked, but remained on. When I looked back down, I found myself staring at your hope chest. And not just at your hope chest, but at the padlock you had attached to it sometime in the recent past. In the aftermath of your death, I had forgotten about the goddamn lock. People put locks on things when they want to keep them safe. People put locks on things when they don't want other people to see what they're hiding inside. The latch had been drilled into the lid from the inside, so it wasn't like I could take it apart with a screwdriver. Without a key to the lock, the only way I was getting in there was if I smashed it apart. It hurt my heart to consider this. But if I'm being honest... I considered this. The wood was strong, the chest well made, so it would take more than a sturdy hammer to do the trick. An axe? We had one in the shed, didn't we? I turned to head out of the closet, already picturing myself chopping your hope chest into kindling, when something caught my eye and made me freeze. Atop the marble pedestal was a small brass key. I stared at it in disbelief, because surely... Surely. I'll hail the mystic pedestal, I said, and picked up the key. It fit into the padlock with ease. When I turned it, the lock popped open. Do you really want to do this? Other Aaron spoke up from the recesses of my admittedly jittery mind. Once you open this, you'll never be able to unopen it. I opened it.